In the world we live in today, energy is required for almost everything. From powering your car to keeping the lights on in your home. Energy is needed not only for your daily needs, but also for producing everything that humans consume. As the population soar unsustainably, so does the energy demand. The demand in global energy consumption is expected to grow significantly in the coming decades. Let's look at some figures. With the global population expected to increase by 2 billion in the next two decades, electricity generation is estimated to increase by almost 49% by the year 2040. So it's very important for us now uh, to try and limit the population to 7.8 billion, which it is today. Any increase will mean greater consumption, will mean greater energy, will mean greater degradation, and all these things which are connected with it. For 2021, the International Energy Agency, IEA, estimates a growth of 4.6% with more than two-thirds of the current increase in demand coming from developing economies and emerging markets, with a significant increase in the demand for fossil fuels. Reports also suggest that the demand for coal alone is projected to increase by almost 60% more than all renewable energy sources combined, leading to a rise of almost 5% in global emissions. It is of utmost importance for us to flip to green energy because we all know that non-renewables means non-renewables. It will finish one day. So the sooner that we go on to renewables, it is better. And we have to, we have to then conserve our natural resources as far as possible. So everything we have to do is to be recycled and regenerated rather than thrown away or wasted. All forms of electricity generation have an environmental impact on our air, water and land. Governments need to invest in improving the efficiency of energy use to reduce the environmental impact of our energy consumption. This will require us to transition from contemporary technologies to renewables and meeting the ever-growing demand for energy worldwide. That too, in a sustainable manner. And it is a key challenge that needs to be overcome. The human population has more than doubled in the last 50 years, leading to expansions in global trade, urbanization and human consumption. Typically, developing countries have the highest population growth rates. They are also the ones who struggle the most in adopting renewable sources of energy. They often opt for fossil fuels, for satiating their energy demand. Resources such as oil, natural gas and coal will eventually deplete and will not refresh for generations to come. Oil is a resource that has taken millions of years of pressure and heat to come into existence, and a lot of the easy-to-tap oil fields that have been discovered so far have already majorly been exploited. Experts believe that we may soon hit peak oil, and that the remaining oil there is to be found will be harder to extract and more expensive. What's worse, a race to exploit the world's seabed for oil and gas is underway, and it can wreak havoc on marine life. Coal has been used for thousands of years, but it was during the Industrial Revolution and the invention of the steam engine that coal soared. Today, coal supplies more than one-third of global electricity generation and plays a crucial role in industries like steel and iron. Coal is extensively used in Asia, as it is widely available and cheap. But this industry is also environmentally destructive. Its use is harmful to human well-being, and the emissions are leading to climate change. 
And then there is nuclear power, but it poses numerous threats to people and the environment. It is evident that our world is heading for climate and ecological tipping points because of human activities. As per the International Energy Agency IEA, around three quarters of global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by the energy sector, adversely affecting our climate. When we talk of the two degrees or 1.5 degrees, it's largely that you cannot even afford going 1.5 degrees Celsius higher temperature. So fossil fuel burning has to be stopped. We have no other alternative if we want to want life to continue on this planet. There are so many things which are ignored and that is indoor air pollution. If you are simply burning wood in uh, kitchens which are not well ventilated, it is going to have impact on every individual in the house. The other is that these technologies are also very energy inefficient. So uh, the moment you go either for gasifier or biomass, uh, the biogas, you are offering cleaner fuel uh, to the general public, the uh, people who are staying in the villages. The IEA also suggests that even though the number of countries pledging to achieve net zero emissions by 2050 have grown rapidly, there haven't been strong enough measures to implement the pledges, leading to a shortfall in the targets set for 2050. Considering the rapidly growing human population and our unsustainable activities, it is estimated that even if the pledges and the commitments are successfully implemented, the world could still face around 22 billion tons of global carbon emissions by 2050. The COVID-19 pandemic brought the world to a standstill for most of 2020. The lockdowns resulted in an estimated drop of around 2.4 billion tons in global carbon emissions. However, as per experts, the carbon emissions were set to bounce back in 2021, led by strong global demand for coal in producing electricity. As per a recent report by the International Energy Association, carbon emissions could increase by almost 5% in 2021, with the demand for coal being the key driver. Even though there is a global increase in demand for renewable energy sources, the expected rise in demand for coal will rule out the use of renewables by almost 60%. Along with the coal industry, the oil industry is yet another element causing adverse effects on our environment. India is currently uh, dependent on coal and oil to a great extent. In fact, India is uh, the largest net importer of coal. A lot of coal is being imported from countries like Australia. Uh, I think there is a need to transition from this towards renewables, solar and wind both. And this transition or transformation needs a lot of policy incentives, a lot of policy changes, and also re requisite infrastructure, operational and feasibility details, as well as, of course, the public support. A contentious issue from the oil industry is the use of fracking. This technique, which has been in use since the 1940s, involves injecting water, sand and other chemicals at high pressure into an oil well or natural gas well, after a perforating gun has created fissures in the ground inside the shale. 
The solution pumped into the well opens up the cracks to increase the production from the well. The controversial part of this is that the cracks created can lead to dangerous chemicals leaking into the groundwater and affect the water table, leading to serious problems for homeowners in the areas surrounding the sites. The continuous use of non-renewable resources for energy production is not only driving them towards depletion, but also the release of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane and many other gases. Burning the non-renewable resources is eventually leading to pollution, warming up our environment. The demand and consumption of energy in India have been growing at one of the fastest rates in the world considering its increasing population and economic development. India has been exploring various opportunities and challenges on its path to develop and provide economical and sustainable energy to its growing population. Adoption of renewable technologies, which is of course modern technology, sustainable and affordable, uh, can be possible, but there are a few challenges. And the main challenge in this direction is the cost, particularly the initial cost of uh, setting up these plants. While coal-based power plants, there is uh, around 4 crores per megawatt. For the wind, it's a uh, 6 to 12 and for the solar it is close to 18 so that is a huge cost almost two three times uh, six three four times however the per unit cost particularly solar energy has come down drastically rupees two per unit but still a lot of investors they need initial money and that needs to be incentivized in some way by the government Fossil fuels are currently the main resources to meet India's energy demands, with coal being a primary contributor, with a share of 53%. However, modern renewable sources of energy such as solar and wind power are also gaining ground rapidly in the country. According to the International Energy Agency, India is on the edge of entering a solar power revolution, which could replace coal as its major source for producing energy. In the present scenario, the solar energy is the cheapest energy available from renewable sources, which is available in abundance all over India. However, the same is available only for 9 to 11 hours in a day and therefore other renewable energies will also has to be opted for. The wind energy is the second cheapest energy available in India. Currently with an installed capacity of 38 gigawatts, India has the fifth largest installed solar power capacity globally and targets to achieve about 450 gigawatts of renewable energy production by 2030, with 280 gigawatts coming from solar power. I think we are moving, and especially this uh, transition to solar energy and the way its prices are coming down, that is going to be the main uh, vehicle to ensure that energy is available and our uh, villages, the people in villages are able to grab this opportunity and with energy excess their development will be much faster. In 2020, India opened the world's largest solar power plant in Rajasthan's Jodhpur district. The Badla Solar Park covers 5,700 hectares of the desert with a maximum capacity of 2,245 megawatts. Currently, Rajasthan produces over 5 gigawatts of solar power per year. Rajasthan also houses the fifth largest installed wind power generation capacity in the country, with more than 4.3 gigawatts of installed wind power capacity. The potential of India's inclusion of solar energy as a renewable resource for energy production has always been great. The government of India has announced the target of 
renewable energy installation by the year 2022 as 175 gigawatt. Out of this, 95 gigawatt of renewable energy has already been installed by March 2021, and another 30 gigawatt is expected by end of 22. However, but with this, we will be able to achieve only about 70% of the targeted capacity. This is mainly reduced due to the pandemic COVID-19 situation prevailing for more than 18 months. Today, many areas within various airports across the country harness solar power. In January 2014, Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi became India's first airport to get a solar power plant installed with a capacity of 2.14 megawatts. The generated electricity is used for the aeronautical ground lighting systems and supplementary buildings at the airport's air site. The capacity of 2.14 megawatts was increased to 7.84 megawatts in 2016, making the airport largely dependent on green energy. To safeguard the health of women and children of households living below the poverty line, the Indian government launched the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Jojna on the 1st of May 2016. 50 million LPG connections were provided to more than 40 million households across the nation as a healthy alternative to coal and firewood. The scheme has been included in the next union budget, targeting 10 million beneficiaries. Another noteworthy initiative, in January 2015, India launched the Ujala scheme, in which LED bulbs and tube lights were offered to domestic consumers to replace the conventional incandescent models, which consume far more energy. Today, more than 360 million LEDs, which have been distributed across the nation, saving more than 40,000 million kilowatts per year. And reducing carbon emissions by more than 30 million tons per year in a lighting revolution that has been remarkable. In a first-of-its-kind effort, India gifted solar panels to the United Nations. These have been installed at the rooftop of its headquarters in New York in 2019. Inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and leaders from across the globe, the Gandhi Solar Park comprises 193 panels, each representing a member of the United Nations. The park's annual energy output was estimated to be 82,244 kilowatt equivalent to the energy produced by burning more than 32,000 kilograms of coal. The transition to green energy has already gained momentum globally, with countries investing heavily to transit to renewable sources of energy. With countries like Germany and the United States of America leading the charts of renewable energy in 2020, India is not far behind. A prominent example of the energy shift to renewable sources of energy is Indira Paryavaran Bhavan, located in New Delhi. Indira Paryavaran Bhavan houses the Ministry of Forest, environment and climate change, and is India's first on-site net-zero building. With an installed solar power capacity of 930 kilowatts peak and spread across 6,000 square meters of area, aiming to minimize energy consumption and carbon emissions. Indira Paryavaran Bhavan uses 70% less energy than conventional buildings and has been accredited with a 5-star rating. Indian Railways is among the world's largest rail networks. It transports 23 million travelers and 3 million tons of freight daily from over 7,300 stations. To cut its carbon footprint, it plans to set up 20 gigawatts of solar projects by 2030. The target is to achieve more than 33 billion units of energy via these projects. 
we seem to be on a very good wicket as far as achieving our target is concerned. But we mustn't let up. We must continue in the same manner as we have been continuing the last three or four years uh, to go towards renewable energies, especially solar and wind. Both have to go hand in hand at the same pace that it was going earlier to be able to reach our target of 40 and then ultimately to reach our target of 100% renewable energy. The Northern Railways also commissioned a total of 5 megawatt solar installation on four central railway stations in Delhi. Indian Railways has equipped more than 900 railway stations in the country with solar power and another 550 stations are to be solarized with rooftop panels soon. Well, when we talk of net zero, it's something which is little difficult to achieve but not impossible. And I'm very pleased when I look at the commitments being made by the industry leaders. Everyone wants to be net zero, but even if it is not 2030, even if you are able to re reduce it by 80%, I think it's great. And 2030 may become 2040, may become 2050. But if we are moving in the right direction and we are taking even baby steps, I'll say that we are going to succeed. The fact is that population growth is driving all of our resource problems, including energy. Slowing the population growth will automatically reduce the energy demand. But there is hope. The world is witnessing a transition from non-renewable sources to renewable sources. Renewable sources like solar energy and wind power are among the fastest emerging energy sources that are being adopted at a rapid pace worldwide. Their integration is essential in decarbonizing the power sector for the population to evolve sustainably while avoiding environmental destruction and pollution. Supportive policies, increased availability and lower costs will go a long way in popularizing renewable energy sources in the next few decades.